Hello, Dan O'Day. Hey, David H. Florence, the 17th. How are you, sir? How about average? How about you? I, great. I'm, I'm doing absolutely great. I, I, uh, I want to welcome everybody who uh, is either watching the recording or tuning right in right away. Uh, I really appreciate you joining us for this AUA. I had that question this morning. If AMA is ask me anything, yeah, I, I'm officially anointing AUA as ask us anything. And this morning or this afternoon, because now it's noon everywhere, except in uh, the places where it's not. Um, let us know in the comments below right now, as you're starting to watch this, even if you're watching the recording, mm -hmm. where you're watching from. And then we're going to get right into the guts of everything okay. uh, and, and allow you to ask us questions. Where are you watching from, Dan? Um, I'm watching from my computer. Awesome. Awesome. Are I'm, you in, I'm in Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles, California, calling in on the toll-free line, everybody. Hey. Jennifer uh, Jennifer Benitez says, Georgia. Hey, Georgia, yeah. yeah that's Jennifer a great Benitez, Taft. Uh, welcome, Jennifer. Thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, you're the first to, uh, you're the first caller. We're looking for caller number seven. So sorry. Remember when, remember when you used to have contests on radio, Dan, and you go, uh, caller number one, then you go to the next line, caller number two, next line. If I was looking for caller number seven, I never took the risk of letting caller number six know that they were caller number six. I always said caller number four three times before I got to the winner because I didn't want to risk somebody coming down to the radio station and busting up the joint, you know? Because they came so close but didn't make it? Correct. Exactly. I get this close. That's it. I'm snapping. You know, I just didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. Hey, Tony from Bentonville, Arkansas. It never would have occurred to me to worry about that. Hey, Tony. Uh, you, you, you wouldn't have done that. Let it, let us I know. It would have occurred to me to worry about that. I, I, oh. I'd better lie about what number caller you are in case you get upset and come down to the station and beat me up. Is that kind of Word. Yeah, that, that sums it up, Dan. That sums up exactly I, I, what, I also, what I did. I've also, um, I got, I got, you got, what, what name did you settle on? The letters A, AMA, A, A, U, A, ask us anything. Okay. I, I, I've got A, D, D, A. It's ask. Yes. Yeah, Dan and David. David anything. anything. Or yeah. ask David and Dan, you know. Right. Whatever you want to do. Yeah, we can pretend that, you know. Europe, yeah, right. what we're doing today, by the way, uh, as people are filing in and finding their seats and saying hello to their neighbors and whatnot, uh, we're on Facebook, we're on LinkedIn, we're on YouTube. All three of them work exactly the same way. If you want to ask us a question about ACX, about audiobooks, about Audible, about the gear that you need to do, about you know what life is like as a narrator, whether or not you can actually make money at this, just everything that we actually teach in our course, the ACX Masterclass, here's your chance to ask those questions. Usually, and I think Dan, you you would agree with me on this, uh, we are pretty strict with our students about what they can and cannot ask, right? They can't ask questions until we've had a chance to teach them that part of this of the curriculum, In the right? Once the class has begun, you mean? Yeah, yeah, oh. once the class yeah, has started. True. We've got it laid out in a way that we believe each step builds on the previous. Right. But today, yeah. you can ask us anything you want. You can ask us any question about that world. It's a world that I live in on a daily basis. Um, some of you may know that as a proud union member in SAG-AFTRA, I'm on the audiobook uh, uh, narrator steering committee. And I'm, I'm really, this part of my voiceover practice is very meaningful to me. The work itself for me is really calming and soothing and centering. It's remunerative. Um, it's it's uh, a joy to work with other, to work with the production community, the, the publishers, to work with Audible, to work with ACX and the rights holders there who I, I feel like uh, sometimes when I'm working with rights holders, I'm working with um, people who are so excited to do things, as opposed to other areas of my practice where people are pretty sometimes sick and tired of what they're doing, you know, but but mm -hmm. audiobook has always 
audiobooks always has this joy to it that that I really love. So if you have questions, please put them in the comments below wherever you're watching this. We want to answer them and nothing is out of bounds. If it's if you somehow come up with a question that is out of bounds, I won't show it. That's that's all I can say. Um, but we'll answer anything about the business of audiobook narration, the the process of working with rights holders on ACX and building a business on ACX, even the gear. What gear do you want to know? Uh, we, we teach a certain uh, strategy and tactic when it comes to production of audiobooks to make things smooth and easy for you. And I think that sometimes when people are considering doing something, they hesitate because they're fearful of failure. They're fearful that they don't know enough to, uh, to do things well. And I can settle that question for you right off the bat. Dan, would you, would you say it's likely that people will fail if they don't have enough information about how to do things appropriately? I, I, think, that, I think the odds are of success are smaller if they don't learn what they're doing. Um, you know, I, you, you heard this, uh, theory of it's not really a theory but i'll call it a theory of mine before and uh hey dave is the class at a set time or can it be shifted okay great yeah, uh, i'm gonna, I'm gonna get that up I'll, i'm just waiting yeah. um i say my theory i I'm, I'm i know this is true i just never heard anybody talk about this is that when you, if, if you want to do audio books and this is something you've thought about maybe for a couple of years and you're just afraid i mean you know you got friends who are having fun with it and doing well and you maybe maybe you've heard maybe you've even heard good things about our class but what happens is if you don't know how to produce audiobooks and especially produce them efficiently in terms of time because you've heard that it, it's a it's a, gr a grueling process right um what happens is your brain, you try to picture it in your brain. You try to imagine that process. Well, they say they've got a faster way to record and edit and you can't make the picture and it just spins around like a, a disc and it, it's, it's very disconcerting. And if anyone is experiencing that, that's what's, if, by the way, let, and let, let, let us know if, if you know what I'm talking about there. And you try to picture it and you just can't do it. So what do I do? And then, and secondly, David, there's the fear. Let's say, let's say they believe us. They've had friends who say good things about the class. They've had, they got friends who took the class are doing really well. They believe it all, except they think they'll be the only person in the world who is too dumb to learn it. Everybody else. Yeah. Okay. I believe it, but I'm, I'm especially dumb. Yeah, or maybe not dumb, but just incapable. Like, I don't have the right tools. I don't have a space in my place. I don't have the time. I'm doing other things. Uh, it's grueling. Boy, how many times have we heard that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We got our first question. Uh, Dave Rudin says, is the class at a set time or can it be shifted? Both yeah. is the is the right answer, wouldn't you say, Dan? Yeah, no, that's exactly it. Um, it, it's a lot. It is a live class and every class is recorded. And so if you can't or choose not to attend live, um, you can always go to the uh, recorded version. And it's just like being there. It's, it's, you know, when, when you hear live on tape from New York and you're watching, you know, one of a talk show, if you're in LA, you don't think to yourself, huh? This actually happened three hours ago. Yeah. You know, you're, we watch it in LA. It feels you you are watching a live show. The uh, Dave, the only thing you will not get if you don't attend live is there's a, a camaraderie that seems to develop as you know people in the class. They'll make comments, you know, in the chat field, um, usually about how something bad about David um, and. It, it builds, it, it really does build a camaraderie. Yeah. And, and we take it one step further than just recording both the classes and the weekly Q&A sessions. If you know you can't attend something because you're working or because you've got other obligations or whatever, 
and you have a question that you want to ask, number one, you can ask it in our discussion group, which is all part of what you get when you get the classes, this private discussion group that's amazing. Mm -hmm. But you can also send us, Dan in particular, uh, these questions ahead of time. He'll put them in uh, a running order and we'll answer them live, which is recorded. And you can go back and listen to what we do. Oftentimes people will ask questions in the group that can easily be answered with uh, a quick, oh, this is in week three of the course and we're gonna get to that next week if we haven't gotten to it yet. Or yeah, if you go back and review the study guide from week one, you'll find it uh, in, in the section about uh, you know creating your profile. Um, and by the way, this course is kind of like a uh, no stone left unturned kind of course because you never know when you're building a business in the world of performance that uh, you, uh, one little thing, one little turn or adjustment of a screw can change everything about how your business succeeds or fails or thrives or struggles. Mm -hmm. And so we cover not just what mic to use. That's like one one thousandth of what we talk about. Um, not what digital audio workstation to use, not just our, our editing method, but the, 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 the way to run your business so that you are looked at as a resource that is desirable. So that what Dan calls the narrator of choice, the audiobook narrator of choice. When a rights holder goes, oh yeah, I know exactly who to get for this. They took care of me in the last uh, project. They know what they're doing. Everything just like, just clicked along. That's what we want to create for you, right? Okay. Wendy's got a question. In the class, will you address doing ACX as a SAG after member? Can, can, yeah. I, can I respond to it right now? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, Wendy, uh, I'm, I'm assume I, I think I know what's behind your question. And if you are a SAG after member and you also are a resident or citizen of the United States or of Canada or of the United Kingdom, no problem. Any SAG after member with, with those geographic limitations, Canada, US, uh, the UK, any SAG after member can audition for and or accept any title on ACX, period. Yeah. No asterisk, nothing, you know, period. I think what's behind Wendy's question, Wendy, correct me if I'm wrong by just typing in the comments. I think what's behind your question is there may be uh, this notion in your head that, oh, those audiobooks on ACX, that's all non union work. Right. I can't do that because I'm in the union. Well, Look at your screen. I'm in the union. I do this work all the time. The nature of our contract, our union contract in the audiobook world is different than the nature of our contracts when it comes to, say, commercials or primetime television. That's a blanket contract. Those are both blanket contracts, the commercials and the primetime television. And there are union jobs and there are non-union jobs. And the two Near the twain shall meet, right? And you, so again, David's talking about television, film, you know, other right. media. But with audiobooks, audiobooks, we create, and in fact, we spend most of our time in the steering committee meetings looking at new contracts that the crack team at SAG AFTRA has been creating and reaching with individual producers, publishers the ACXs of the world, the Findaway Voices of the world, the Audibles of the world, the Penguin Random Houses of the world, they're all separate contracts. Mm -hmm. And as an audio, as a, as a union member, you are absolutely able to take any job you want in the world of audiobooks, even if it's non-union. But you don't have to. You can take it as a union member. And we, we go very deep in the course about this. I am passionate about making sure that SAG after members know what's available to them mm -hmm. and how to go about doing it. And ACX is a great uh, uh, example of a space where union members, non-union members can all play the game and they can all do so without any fear of retribution 
uh, or, or criticism from the union or from other voice talent? So that is a great question. And that is exactly why we are so deep with this course. You know, asking questions about union membership in other in other courses might lend you might might send you to the answer of yeah you know i really don't know maybe you should call the union and we don't want that to be the case that's that's not what we're looking for what we're looking for is to be able to help you create a business that is successful and satisfying and where you have a base of information in the course itself remember that first question about you know will you have access to these things yeah forever so when you have a question, you can or, ask God. Uh, or until the internet explodes. Well, that that careful. You got to be careful there, Dan. Our lawyers I, insist we say that. I I feel like Elon Musk might be uh, heading in that direction, but I don't know. I know you're a big fan of Elon, so I'm. Oh I'm, yeah. You're, you're a fanboy of Elon's. Uh, um, that's why. I, that's why I got that T-shirt that says, "What would Elon do?" What would Elon do exactly? So uh, the reason that we're here today is that just this morning we made it possible dan came up with this cockamamie scheme over the weekend we made it possible to uh spread out your payments for the course over three months and at the end of that three months on that third payment date that's actually the weekend before we start the class so it's really convenient that dan had this idea exactly two months prior to the course starting and there's no fee there's no interest. You know, you do a payment plan sometimes and it's got an additional fee associated with it because, you know, the people involved are managing the payment plan and we're doing that. Right. But that's not what we're doing here. Not only that, uh, Dan, is this the the most that anybody would pay for the course or the least that anybody would pay for the course <laughs> when they do the, the payment plan? If they sign up for our three payment plan, it's the absolute least that anyone will pay. Um, <laughs> Traditionally, and I think we probably will do it uh, again for the next, this upcoming class. Traditionally, when we open registration for about the first two days or sometimes three days, I, I don't recall, it's our early registration period, early action period. Those people, we pay the first 300 bucks of their tuition. Right. And that comes to exact oh so we pay 300 bucks so we they pay 1695 total we pay 300 and that's exactly what you'll pay if you do the three pay without any interest or surcharge or anything and there is no way anyone will pay less than that it there are people who will pay more the ones who sign up for the class but they wait kind of until the end of the registration period and do it at the last second. Uh, they'll they'll end up paying more, and we we make that clear to them. Um, but no one is paying less than you if you sign up here. So uh, it's an all around yeah. amazing deal because you pay the lowest price of anybody, and you pay it across three months with no interest and with no uh, fee associated with the payment. Dave's back with a second question. And if and by the way, David, you know. That's never been done before. Uh, until now, there's never been anything where you could break it down into payments. We're the first people ever to do that. Oh, yeah. What's wrong yeah. with you? Yeah, we're on the cover of Wall Street Journal today. Okay. I didn't well, know Well, it's a cartoon. Dave follows up his first question with, is the class every day? How many weeks? Great question. Thank you so much. <clears throat> so the class is currently four weeks long. Each week has two sessions on a Monday and a Thursday, on the Mondays and the Thursdays of each week. The Monday night course is live on Zoom. It's recorded. Again, you know you get you have the recordings available to you. So same with the, the Q&A. Uh, each one of those is uh, anywhere between two and three, sometimes longer, hours long. Um, and so the class is actually broken up into four weekly sets of modules and we cover everything from creating your profile on acx dan has this amazing approach to writing your profiles that is is just stunning it's it's attractive as opposed to repellent 
which mm. is, uh, you know, a good thing for Dan. He's he's like yeah. he's like living off that. Normally, yeah. I hear repellent much more often than I hear attractive. So thank yeah. you. Yeah, and then uh, you know, so we talk about the business during the first week. Then the second week, we start to get into nonfiction audio books. We start to get into the ways that ACX presents uh projects by rights holders how to deal with rights holders we begin that process of teaching you how to hold a rights holders hand we start to share with you some of the tools that i use in my voiceover practice and audiobooks in particular in the third week we start to talk about the gear and auditioning and then the production process and we share my stair step method which is the method that i use for editing uh, recording, editing, and mastering audiobooks in a way that is very efficient, but very high quality. And then the fourth week is spent, we also talk about fiction audiobooks during the third week. The fourth week is spent <clears throat> doing the kind of, of uh, stitching together of information and processes that so many other classes leave behind. Uh, how to use all the tools that we've given you in the best way possible. And then we also tell you how to take what you've learned in the ACX Masterclass and apply it to all of the other possible employers that you might have, the findaways of the world, the publishers of the world, the producers of the world, people like Scribe Media and Penguin Random House and Tantor. And all along the way, each week, you'll be able to ask questions about what we taught during that week. So that's the, the the structure of the course again the the course is live mm -hmm. uh but all of the all of the uh the things that might be a little bit now wait what did you just say there you can always ask for clarification on and the community that we've created is filled with people who are on this journey with you they say you can go uh, a reasonable distance alone, but you can go really far together with others. So with us and with your fellow ACX Masterclass members, um, it's amazing how all of these things fall into place. And would you agree with me, Dan, that one of the, the, the great moments is when people experience something that they didn't have information on, like how to edit yeah. efficiently, and they go, oh. And that's the exact verbal response. They go, Oh, right yeah that, that that's it and you go yeah that, that, that's it yeah. so make it more complicated yeah it's interesting because uh this morning when i sent the email out uh to let people know about this ama i got a note back because somebody clicked on the link and went to this the the page where you can register for the course and they saw that it was 1695 and three payments is 565 each month, which is really easy on your on your cash flow. And the response I got back was this. <laughs> now that the last the last two uh, characters, that's a Greek word. I'm trying to remember. No, it's not a Greek word, no. Dan. Come on. Huh. It's 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 Jewish. Uh it's 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 Yiddish, Yiddish actually. Uh it's an Oy. exclamation of wow, really? Oi, you're kidding me, right? So I wrote them back and I said, you know. I know you don't know what's in the course yet. We, we do have a summary on the, the registration page of uh, what each week, the dates of each week, but not what's in each week. And I said, once you get to see what's in the course itself, the, the, the last letter there might change from OI, the, the Y might change to an H. Oh, oh, I see. Okay. So... I, I wrote that back and I said, listen, I understand if you have any questions, we're doing this AMA today at noon or AUA at noon. And I said, it sounds like you need more information. And he wrote me back a, a, a fairly um, interesting and common response when people don't know what they're getting for their money. And I wanted to share it with you. He said, I'm doing this part time. And I think he's talking about uh, voiceover in general. Huh. Nobody tells you where the work is. You could be the best at this in the world. But if you're not getting work, it's a waste of time and money. I won't be quitting my day job. And you might not believe this, but this is a fairly common response. 
And mostly it's from people who are frustrated because they haven't been given the information that they need or they said to themselves, how hard could this be? And just kind of applied what they knew about other areas of voiceover to audiobooks, which is not a great idea to do. And I wrote him back and I said, look, I understand. I get it, you know? And we had an email conversation. And in the email conversation, he shared that he had been really frustrated with uh, Voice 123. And in fact, part of our course is why ACX and audiobooks in general are so much better, more satisfying, can be more remunerative than other areas of voiceover, and in particular, the pay-to-play sites. Mm -hmm. Dan has this whole list of things as to why ACX is better, pursuing audiobooks on ACX is better than working with a pay-for-play. Uh, one of the things in particular, and I'll just share this with you now as we as we get more comments and questions, one of the things in particular is um, it's free. It's absolutely free. In fact, we answer that question six ways to Sunday. What does it cost to join? How much does it cost each year to be on the on the on the site? Uh, what does it cost to audition? What does it cost if, wh how much money do they take from you if you book a job? You know, all the things that you have to ask yourself on all these other sites in other areas of voiceover, the answer on ACX is zero. And what David's describing actually uh, describes the genesis of this class. Um, th this all began uh, at a gourmet meal at this really high tone uh, Beverly Hills restaurant called Fat Burger. <laughs> and uh, David and I had, had lunch and David started telling me about ACX of which I had not heard. This, this was 20, uh, 2014. And so he described it and we went through this, this almost like a sketch of saying, okay, wait, wait. So, what do they charge you to be on the platform each year? They don't charge you anything. Oh, so wh wh what do they charge you to audition? They don't charge. What percentage, you know, do they get of your, and I kept that, you know, and David was saying, it doesn't cost anything. And my, and my response to that was, Man, I'm I'm really out of it. I this, everybody in voiceover must know this. This sounds incredible. Yeah. And David said no, because it was pretty still pretty new. Um, and when David explained how it works, and that few people really either knew about it at the time or understood how to use it, that's when we said started talking. Well, maybe maybe we can teach him. Yeah. So. Uh, I know I, I understand the skepticism that somebody might have. Well, and there are two levels. You know, can anybody succeed in audiobooks? Period. And what's the deal with this class I keep hearing about? You know, two separate yeah. things to be skeptical about. Yeah, uh, and I would be I would be very skeptical about the first question because the answer to that question, frankly, is absolutely not. Not everybody can be successful, but certainly they won't be successful. If they don't have the right tools, if they don't have, if they don't know how to use them, if they don't have the right strategies as they approach the business and tactics as they try to get things done, you know, if you hamstring yourself by just thinking, hey, how hard can this possibly be? And you just try to do it and you're frustrated and then you blame the business rather than your own lack of knowledge and preparation. Yeah. That's usually the mistake that people make. Uh, Dave, I don't know how to make this any clearer. Well, wait, but, well, just, but did we answer, um, did we make it clear to Dave uh, how many days per week and stuff? Because I know you. Yeah, we said Monday and Thursday. Right, but I don't think we, we drove it home. That's how, so there's <laughs> yeah. Monday, Mondays. Monday is our, what we, what we call our teaching class. Right. And Thursday, usually Thursdays, um, and I believe that's what it'll be next year. I'll have to find out from David. Uh, yeah. On Thursdays, it's our live Q&A. So to answer your question very directly, we have the two live classes per week. And if you cannot or prefer not to attend live, doesn't matter. You, you can you attend the, the video whenever you want. You get the MP3 recording 
Uh, you also got a ton of supplemental materials, PDFs and all a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So I just want to, I, I, I get frustrated if I ask a question in a setting like this and it never quite gets answered. So that's why David, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but that's okay. That's Go ahead and finish here. up with what he is asking now. Cause we answered this before as well. Go ahead. Well, I think that's a, I don't think remunerative means money. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What's on the screen. Will I have access to the class oh. videos the rest of my life or does it go away? Well, Dave, how long read ahead, you Dan, you're how reading ahead you... and you're annoying me. Okay. So Dave, how, how do you, uh, how David. long, do you plan, how long do you plan to live? <laughs> you're asking Dave Rudin this. Yeah. I mean, uh, we don't, we can't, you don't know the, your eating habits or health. Um, All right. You have access forever. It's, it's forever. Right. Yeah, it is. And, and there are people that have gone back to when they took the course in 2016. Oh, I found it. Great. Perfect. And so, you know, yeah, it's really important that you have that resource to you. Not only do you have re access to the, the, the videos, the audio, the supplemental material that we share with you, the, we, we have a list of best of breed equipment, for example, once we go through it all, we put it in a summary for you so you know exactly what to get. You may have the equipment already, who knows? Um, but the, also, the, also, the other thing that you get is access to our discussion group and all of the other graduates, both in your class and in all of the preceding classes that are now working in the business, working in the trenches every day, understand everything from the current mode of, uh, you know, what audition length should be to what the scams are. And we have a whole section because yeah, ACX has grown so huge. What? Unfortunately, uh, scamming industry is is Yeah, been because, born. because ACX is so big now. You know, they've attracted scammers. We show you how to avoid those. Um, so, yeah, it you have access. It doesn't go away. Your class materials are yours forever. And then Dave followed up with, does remunerative mean money? Remun remunerative is, I don't I don't know what that word means. It means, but re it it means rewarding. Oh, the remunerative means rewarding. No, no, I'm going to go with this joke, Dan, and you're not going to stop me. Oh, David's, wait, wait, David's going to tell a joke. Uh, okay. <clears throat> okay. You ready? Yeah. I use the word remunerative all the time, whether I know what it means or not. I actually <laughs> do know what it means. <laughs> Thank you, Dan. Uh, it means well-paid or well-rewarded. Or uh, if, you, if you say you don't make any money at it, you don't ever say it's remunerative. But if you do make money at it, uh, I've shared this many times in the course, um, and I'm not the only person in the world that can share this kind of a, of a data point, but I pay my mortgage every month with the money that I make from both Royalty Share, Royalty Share Plus, and the ongoing per finished hour work that I do on ACX uh, with audiobook narrators, my clients, with, with uh, publishers. I use the same strategies and tactics that I use on ACX with big publishers and with production houses. And yes, my rates are higher than most people's rates are, but that's also something that we encourage you to do. And that is to create support and to get what you're worth. Dan and I believe very strongly in having a mindset around not being the value proposition, not being the 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 least expensive on the block, and yeah. that'll get you some work. Yeah, if your ACX profile says I'll meet or beat any other narrator's price, yeah, I don't think that's going to attract <laughs> a lot of uh, clients. Yeah, no. What we want you to do is to understand your worth, and once you have all the tools that will give you all of the, the training that we'll give you, the practice that we'll give you, the community that we will give you, that you will generate a business for yourself that supports, at the very least, union rates. Now, some of you are like, wait, wait, wait what's Royalty Share? What's Royalty Share Plus? What's Per Finished Hour? Until there was an ACX, the only way that audiobook narrators were paid, the way I was paid for decades, 
was per finished hour. So if the book was 10 hours long, you got paid, you know, 150 to $200 per hour. Uh, the book is 10 hours long, you get 1500 to $2,000. And that rate would be some rate certain. Currently, union rates revolve between 200 and 250 per finished hour. And that's the way most big publishers work. You don't get ongoing income from your work like you would if you were getting, you know, residuals for television work or film work. Anyway, ACX is owned by Audible. Audible is owned by Amazon. Amazon uses very modern techniques when working with suppliers and working with resources. And one of those very modern techniques, which is very remunerative, is royalty share. It's revenue sharing. So it's free to join. It's free to audition. It's free when you get booked. They don't take uh, a fee from you when you get booked for a job. The only time you share revenue is when your book sells if the project is a royalty share project. Yeah, but then David, don't you then have the hassle of collecting, making sure that you get your royalties and stuff? Like, you know, you'd you think go, that- You gotta yeah. go to somebody's house once a month or what? Yeah, no, the only, the only chore that you have once a month is opening up your email from Audible, letting you know how much money they've direct deposited into your account. Yeah, that's pretty cool. You don't have to collect anything. You don't have to invoice clients. Think about, this is on that list of things that Dan has about working with ACX versus working with, uh, you know, uh, pay to play sites, you know, invoicing your clients and chasing after them for money. Um, ACX and Audible have these computers that compute your royalty share each month. And one of the real joys is creating that, on a very serious note, creating that body of work that continues to kick off cash every single month as people buy copies of the books that you narrate. This to me, uh, you know, was, was obvious. And to many people in the union was, what? Wait a minute, I don't get a big check at the end and that's it? I, I have to wait around for years and years to get all my money? Well, every one of the books that I've done so far on a royalty share basis has paid me more money than I would have made had I gotten union rates per finished hour. Now, that to me is the proof of the pudding. And I, I, I can tell you that not everybody's experience is going to be that. In fact, I, to be fair, likely it Probably. right most people won't be, won't be most people's experience because they'll get enough to get started and then they'll stop listening. Or they're like, yeah, I got this. I, I mean, shh, quiet. I'm, I'm, I'm working here, right? So uh, Dave says, should I type my credit card now for first payment? Do you need my ATM pin? Uh, yes. Of course, we need all of that, Dave. Please do that. Uh, and your ID, your social security number, your mom's maiden name. Mom's we need all that. Name, and the name of your first pet. I love Dave. He's awesome. And the name of your mom's first pet. That's right. A lot of people don't. Who's your third grade math teacher? I love those questions. Yeah. Anyway, the point is, you know, when you approach something this um, detail oriented, I don't want to say uh, intricate or heavy lifting, and there's a lot to consider here. And again, the tiniest little adjustment can make all the difference in the world. And I've been doing this now for a little over a decade. ACX came to be in 2011, and I was one of the first, I think, 12 narrators that they invited to be beta testers of the group and to be on the group. And I've been an Audible approved producer, which is a status that you get when you uh, know what you're doing and you do a great job for people and they reward you with that. I've been that since the very beginning of ACX's existence. I've spoken with uh, ACX uh, staff members at you know live events. You know, they're the ACX people. I'm the narrator that works on ACX. This woman over here is the rights holder that they got to be on the panel. I've done those many number, many, many times. And the notion of having the right preparation is so key. This course is the accumulation of all of the experience that I've had working on the platform and all of the experience that Dan has had helping voice talent, radio people, non-radio people, copywriters, 
uh, salespeople, management people in radio over the years and in other areas of work, this is like this lovely blending of uh, strawberry jam and peanut butter on on Wonder Bread. It's just lovely. And by the way, Dan, yes, you are the Wonder Bread. Wow. Yeah. Uh, giving you that statement. Build stronger bodies eight ways. Is that? Perfect? Yeah, something like that. Um, yeah. David, the, the something you said, uh, I, I want to uh, take issue with a word you use because you said it a couple of times. You referred to our discussion group. And it's not, in my opinion, it's definitely not a discussion group. I mean, it's, to me, a discussion group is where people comment, somebody asks a question, and then other people say why that's such a stupid question. And, you know, you got to be an idiot. This, this is our mastermind group. And so w when you join the class for uh, temporarily for the four weeks of the class, you have your own private mastermind group that's only your class. So there is nobody who is uh, at a different place in the process than you. Shortly after the class ends, we invite you to join our permanent mastermind group. And when you're in it, you'll understand why I'm saying mastermind. It's, I, I've been saying this for a while now. I believe it's the, it's the best mastermind group in the world uh, certainly on the internet, and we don't get the credit. It, the first class we taught happened to have some great people in it. And great meaning not just talented, but also generous and you know wanting to help. And so now it's it's pretty darn hard for someone to come up with a question about producing audio books and not have someone in the uh, mastermind group quickly respond because they've already been through it all. Whatever, whatever problem you might run into. And spoiler alert, uh, if you become an audiobook narrator and you produce it yourself, spoiler alert, there'll be some problems every now and then. And, and when you have that problem, you, uh, if, if you're like me, and I know I am, if you, if you have that problem, <laughs> Your reaction is, oh, God, everything's awful. Oh, I, I just want to, I hate this. And you want to kill your computer. And then somebody steps in, oh, no, 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 try this. And they'll send you a screenshot or something. And, you, and now you're happy again. Yeah. So it's, I don't, I don't, I, discussion group for me is inaccurate. Yeah. And, and especially in our space. Because if you go, if you those of you watching on Facebook or or, or other uh, sites that have discussion groups, if you've ever been to an audiobook narrator discussion group on Facebook, it's likely not been a very pleasant experience because there are people there who are engaged in the art of both mansplaining and womansplaining, and and uh, some of them have very strong opinions and are inept at sharing those opinions with you in a way that can help you move forward in your career. They're actually fairly destructive and don't even realize it. Mm -hmm. I've actually uh, been in situations where people have asked a question, I've answered it, and I've been presented with somebody who knows what they're talking about telling me that I am a charlatan, that I am selling snake oil. That, and I'm like, I don't know what else to do other than say, this is my body of work. These are my clients. These are my students. These are the people that have gone on. Do you know that our students in the ACX Masterclass, Dan, have now produced over 5,000 yeah. audio books? I've, I've been meaning to check with our in-house statistician to get an estimate of yeah. how many, you know, so, yeah. so we can tell. Yeah. 5,000 books. So that's and and you think to yourself oh well how many there there got to be gazillions of books on on uh, ACX or on Audible not out of ACX but out of other yeah there are gazillions that's the actual technical term for it but the truth is one out of every thirty books that has been produced over the last five years has been produced that that's for sale on AC on Audible from ACX one out of every thirty books is from our students. It's crazy. When I, and when, I've never checked that. I've never got, I, whenever you say that, I'm thinking. Really? So here's how I know this. We get notified 
or, or I guess ACX actually publishes how many books they have made for sale in the previous 12 months. And so you take that number and then you take the number of our books and you divide by, you know, that and you get 30. So it's, you know, on well, average. I understand the mathematical principle behind Do it. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I, All right. I went to elementary school or grade school, right. depending. So I would love to I would love to answer questions uh, about uh, ACX, about Audible. Nobody's asked any questions about the gear yet. What, what uh, about Wendy's, Wendy's asking us to discuss getting someone who offers you work to convert to union? Where does she? Where is that? It's midway. Oh, hold on. Did I miss something? Could be. Don't worry, Wendy. Oh, no, I, see it. I see it. Okay, great. Oh, I think that's what I'm asking is if you discuss someone who offers you. Yeah, it's called using a paymaster. And that's in week four of our of our curriculum. We talk about how to use a paymaster, how paymasters work. And by the way, for those of you that have no idea what Wendy's talking about, that's okay. You're not a union member. It's not something that you even have to worry about. But once you become a union member, you want to make sure that you're getting credit for your pension and your health insurance. And so that's a big deal, Wendy. And you are so spot on to be concerned about that. We made it part of the curriculum the moment, the actual moment that we signed a contract with Audible about ACX and those uh, contributions became a real thing. Now, when you do per finished hour, when you do royalty share plus, and soon your actual royalty shares, there's going to be a contribution to your pension and health. And if you don't do those things under either an OPO contract, which is one production only with the union, you'll know what that means, uh, or via the ACX contract, you need to convert it to a contract. That's what Wendy is talking about. And that's how detailed we get in and, this course. And because I think there might be a chance that someone makes an assumption here that is not quite correct. Um, Wendy, we're not saying that any gig you take uh, from ACX, any, any job, any book title, we're not saying anything you take on, a, on ACX will apply toward your uh, pension and health. Yeah, it has um, to meet minimum union requirements. Yeah. Now, so what What if it doesn't pay enough uh, to contribute to your uh, pension and health? Oh, no problem. You get the money anyway. The uh, SAG guy after is not mad. It's just that if you're charging below, then you don't get the credit. And we know people who do uh, audio books, uh, uh, they do enough audiobooks a year to uh, qualify for the the renewal of their pension health. I mean, that's, I remember, uh, well, I started it, so I'll finish it. Uh, I, I don't even care for this guy as, as a performer, but there's a, you might remember Paul Anka. <laughs> and uh, I remember years and years and years ago, him saying that each year he works until he's made a million dollars and then he he's done. And so we have people who kind of do that, except not a million dollars, but until they have achieved this goal, they, they work. And when they hit it, okay, now they relax. Uh, Cause I know that nobody in the union wants to lose the, the pension and health. Right, exactly. And with the new situation with the pandemic and the health plan, uh, having some real struggles over the last few years and having to raise that minimum floor of how to qualify for health. Um, you know, audiobooks make an amazing uh, addition to on camera work, to other voiceover work, commercial work, et cetera. And if you've been wondering how to join the union, guess what? Audiobooks is the easiest, most direct path. All you need to do is book one union qualifying audiobook and you're in. 
Now, the thing that Dan was saying about, you know, you just get the money if you don't do the job that meets union requirements. One of the things that we kind of nudge you towards is saying no or renegotiating that fee so that it does yeah. meet union requirements. So for those of you that are not in the union, this is like, oh, those are those union people. They they have their own, you know, matrix of things to worry about. Well, wouldn't it be great if you had to worry about those things for just a moment? You know, um, Dave says, what are equipment suggestions? I'm not sure if Dave is saying, what do you mean by the phrase equipment suggestions? Or if he's actually asking oh. <laughs> for individual suggestions about yeah. equipment. Dave, yeah, I've heard you guys talk about right? equipment suggestions, but I don't know what that phrase means. Yeah, exactly. that's what he's asking. I, I got to Google that. Uh, what equipment are you interested in? Because there's really only two pieces of gear that are required other than your computer, which you need to do for, you need a whole bunch of other things. Um, and that's your mic and your monitoring system, your earbuds or whatever. Usually I have my mic sitting right here, but I'm actually rebuilding uh, my studio upstairs so that it, it's upstairs. Um, so the mic that we recommend is the Audio-Technica AT2020 USB+. Plus. And I know you're sitting there, you're going, oh, that's it, I'm done. You guys said USB mic, you're stupid. You don't know what you're talking huh. about. Yeah, that's right. that's Everybody it. knows USB mics that all suck. What, what right. idiot would use a USB mic? You know, when you hear people say never, ever use a USB mic, listen to them. Because what they're talking about is like, you know, your air earbuds that have a built in microphone that is USB based that you plug into your devices or that headset mic that you might use for playing Call of Duty or a really cheap Yeti or Snowball. They're Those absolutely are, right. And the, really uh, use... a, a blue Yeti is really cute though. I can see mine on the cabinet. Yeah. Use it. Yeah. yeah. But what if, what if you actually looked at the gear and said, okay, what they're suggesting that you get is a studio microphone and an interface, a box that you plug the studio microphone into and then you plug the studio, the interface into your computer. All right. So what if, just get, hold on with me. So what if there was a microphone that that interface box was miniaturized and put into the base of the microphone, the bottom of the microphone. And that microphone was a very high quality version of a studio microphone. Those exist. They are unicorns, but they exist. And I use it every single day for all of my voiceover work. Now, you can spend thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars on gear. Be my guest. But it's very likely that you could use that money for other more important things. And you don't need to spend that kind of money on gear that will end up creating a product for you that is so infinitesimally better that you didn't need to spend that money to begin with. I have a, a Neumann U87 sitting on my shelf in its oak box. It's been sitting there now for about 12 years because I discovered the AT2020 USB Plus. And I've been making money, doing my voiceover work on that mic every day for over a decade. It's currently, currently, I don't know what it's going to be after the Black Friday sales are over, but get this. Currently, it's so inexpensive, people completely don't believe it's the right mic to use. Because usually, it's $140. Right. I'm getting an idea for a podcast episode right now, Dan. Okay. okay. Usually, the AT2020 is $149, $150. And people are like, oh, okay, well, all right, that's more expensive than I thought a USB mic would be. All right, I'll cons maybe it's good enough. You know, you're immediately going, oh, price, value. Okay, great. Guess what the AT2020 has been for the last couple of weeks since Black Friday? $139. $69. What? I'm I'm not kidding you. No, that I bought 10 of them. I bought 10 of them. They're here in my studio yeah. in case there's ever a supply chain issue again when I when I need to give clients this microphone, right? So at that point, you go, wait a minute, $69. That's cheaper than the price that I saw the snowball was. That can't be a good microphone. That's got to be an awful microphone. Right. You immediately question its value based on the price. And, and understandably so. And understandably so. And so 
if if there was this microphone that had really great interface electronics built into the microphone and a USB cable came out of that microphone, what's the diff? There is none. And that's the mic I use. That's the mic we, we suggest people get. If they don't have gear, if they do have gear, whatever, that's the microphone that we suggest. It, and, David, and, how about if we tell them exactly there, there's only one iteration of that uh, audio technical mic that we're recommending because they're like five. Right. Different. So is it okay to get real specific? And we, we yeah, we did. We said the AT twenty twenty USB you, plus. Right, and, but I and, and you did say that when when before, but. I'm guessing people weren't in a mode of wait. Let me write this down. And yeah, jot it you're down. Thinking, oh, okay, eight Audio Technica, got it. No, it's audio. It's Audio Technica U, uh, 2020 USB plus. If AT it's missing one of those right. elements, I'm sorry, David. Yeah, AT 2020 USB plus. AT 2020 USB plus. And I don't know, but maybe one of us is using that microphone and it's in their shot as we speak. I don't know. I don't know. Let me move this out of the way and check. Yeah. So uh, Dave also says, is the recording software part of the class? Absolutely. Not only which recording software to use, Audacity, or not only that, but how to use it mm -hmm. to its ultimate efficiency. Um, in fact, this course was kind of built around this secret sauce that I have called the stair step method. And it's a method that I built around Audacity because of the behaviors that Audacity exhibits. And so it's a fairly involved process. It's really straightforward once I demonstrate it for you. And we do that during the two weeks of the class from the week two to week three. Um, so uh, yes, as is the mastering software, because one of the things that you need to do once you record and edit and you have your finished product is you have to make that product meet Audible's requirements for audio, the format, the bit rate, the RMS uh, uh, peaking, uh, the peak and RMS uh, normalization standards, all of that stuff that you look at on the page on the ACX site and you go, what? We show you how to do it with one drag and drop move and we give you the mastering software we hand it to you we pay for it and hand it to you as part of the course so I, I I'm, the gonna repeat, I'm gonna repeat that in case somebody missed it um the reason i do this is we've learned from experience that david doesn't communicate very effectively and so i have to jump in um the for mastering the your audio once you've recorded it the mastering that we teach is drag the file it'll be a wave file drag the file onto this piece of software whether it's a pc or a mac about what six seconds later you'll have what you need you know it'll make the the, the you'll end up with three files you get to depending on what you want but you, you have three and one of them, oh, that's the one that uh, uh, ACX wants. We're done. I mean, Actually, it's just one file. It's just one file now. So oh, really? yeah, you, you get the finished file. Yep. Uh, if, you, if you're using it, Dan, and you're still getting three files, uh, I urge you to go to the preferences and say, turn off the, the option of leave the interim files behind. Okay. And also now you say that I do remember uh, you selling announcing in the mastermind group like a year ago or something that you, you've saved them a step i think it's because you didn't explain in the group exactly again i have problems communicating so yeah no no seriously i i i didn't hear the explanation of of anyways it's cool great um, julia says if i use logic pro Will you be able to help me or do you just talk about audacity so the good news is logic pro is overkill for what we do you may love living in logic pro you're a mac user as i am you love the whole nature of it logic pro happens to be one of those pieces of software that does exactly what we teach in the stair step method in logic pro so if you want to stay in logic pro you can 
But I think what you'll find is that we as voice talent don't need 99% of what Logic Pro and Pro Tools and Studio One and all of these other packages are capable of doing. Now, you might be a musician or you might be doing mix down work for films or you might be doing a really high end multi track recording and mixing where you need Logic Pro and you need automated faders and you need plugins and you need all of these other things. That's great. But you may end up thinking, oh, you know what? Instead of waiting for four hours for Logic Pro to launch, which it doesn't do for everybody, but it, it can, um, I can just pop open Audacity, do my work in audiobooks, and then go back to using Logic Pro for the stuff that I really need what it does, right? It's kind of like the difference between using a wrench and a hammer, depending upon whether you have a screw, a bolt, or a, a nail. And so the answer is yes, but, or yes, and. Kind of like we're in improv class, Julia, together, you and me. <laughs> um, so yeah, that was that's a great question. I really appreciate that. Uh, these are the kinds of things that we dive into because people are sitting there going, I heard you had to use Pro Tools. I heard that the only thing that we, you would want to do was, uh, you know, use a Reaper. Okay, if, you can use Reaper if you want. You can use Studio One if you want. If, if you want. if you the, if you know someone who records, edits, and masters his or her uh, audio, his vo voice for audiobooks, and they're using Pro Tools, it's like buying a Jaguar and using it to go to the Seven Eleven. It's like you know it'll get you there, but why would you do that? Exactly. Uh, thank you're welcome, Julia. Thank you for, for asking that question. Cause it's a question we get a lot. It's like, you know, I've already got this mic. I've already got this software. Can you help me even though I already have sunk costs right. and sunk experience? I know how these things work. We've had people who have applied both the stair step method and some of the other concepts that we teach in the class technically to the gear and the digital audio workstation, the DAW that they use currently and have been very happy with it. What I'm trying to do is I just want to put you, we want to put you in a position where you're spending not the least amount of time possible, but certainly an economical amount of time and turning out mm. incredibly good work. David, I'm, 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 I am concerned about uh, some, uh, something we're communicating. Um, what you just said about how, if you want to use, you know, this software or this workstation, um, someone might interpret that as you're saying, you can take my stair step method of editing, recording and editing and do it on any workstation, do that's it with true. any software. And that's yeah, not, that, that's not true. No, okay. but logic pro happens to be one that you can, there are others that you cannot. And most and you so, cannot. And, and it's just because it's just because of the way something's designed. You know, it's a design thing and some of them have it and some don't, but mo most don't. All right, so we're running over a little bit. I didn't have a time set for this. It's a little oh. over an hour we've been online. Uh, we want people to be able to ask their final questions. And then uh, if they find what we're doing uh, reasonable and useful. We'd love to have you as part of the new 2023 ACX Masterclass. It's going to start in February. And if you really want to save yourself some cash flow, some money, certainly you'll pay the lowest of anybody. You'll pay it over time with no fee, no interest. Check out the link. It's on the screen. It's also in the description of this video on whatever channel you're watching, Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube. You can find the link in the thing there, and it's acxmasterclass.com slash 3PMT. This will only be available through this coming Friday night. So if you're watching the recording and you're going, what Friday night? Mm -hmm. I believe it's December 9th at 9 p.m. Yeah. Pacific. So we're doing this today, which is December 5th, uh, uh, I think. I, yeah. Yeah. So today through this Friday... If you're watching the recording, it may be after today, but this offer is only available now. Once people start this payment plan, you'll pay $565 per month for the next three months, and you're in. 
it's easy peasy. It's easier on your your wallet. It's easier on your cash flow, and it's uh, kind of a kind of a a great holiday gift as well. Now, if you have friends who have always been told, "Hey, they've got a great voice. They they should do audiobooks or they should do voiceover." Feel free to share them, share with them this link. Feel free to share with them this video so they can ask these questions. We have two main groups of people that we usually draw students from. One is existing actors and voice talent who have done work in other areas. Mm -hmm. Maybe they've tried audiobooks and they've found them to be impenetrable or just too much to worry about. Those are the people that go, oh, because they see how they do their work in other areas and they see how it can apply to audiobooks. The second group of people are people who what I call are side grading, not upgrading or downgrading, but side grading from another business entirely. Oh. Salespeople, teachers, doctors, lawyers, uh, customer service reps, uh, designers, graphic designers, authors, people who want to narrate their own audiobooks. They come to us and they figure it out. They figure out what's going on. All of those people are served by what we do and we, we tailor what we do to them. We want to make you the narrator of choice, the go-to narrator for rights holders to go to regularly and to share with their friends, oh, you should get Dave Rudin, you should get Wendy Foxworth, you should get Julia Holland to do your book because they know what they're doing, Yeah, and right? And and the reason that's important is the rights holder, which is what they call what most people would say the author, but it might not, it might be the publisher, it might be somebody who owns the rights for whatever reason. The rights holder is not looking for the best audiobook narrator. They're not looking for the audiobook narrator with the most expensive equipment. They're looking for someone whom they can trust to do to take to manage the entire project, start to finish, get it for sale on Audible, and have it sound great. Yeah. And once that's that's, I liken it. If you've ever looked for someone, you know, a plumber or you know, a handyman or something, and you find somebody finally, okay, that that's and you like and you like their work, that's who you go to. You don't each time you have a plumbing problem, you don't go online and do a search. You just call the people that you learned you could trust last time. And that's what it is for ACX. They're looking. It's scary to rights holders, especially you know, the first time. And they're, they're terrified. And they're looking for someone who can honestly say to them, don't worry. Yeah. All right. Last call for questions. Uh, we're going to wrap things up here. I want to make sure that we've answered. Dave, you're welcome. Uh, I want to make sure that we've answered the questions that people uh, brought with them that they've had. Uh, hopefully, we've answered your questions about the course, the cost of the course, what we cover in the course. Uh, we've we've answered Dan's uh, question about how to find a handyman. Uh, we have. And Dan, by the way, Dan started with me. He goes, "Hey, do you know how to install uh, towel hooks?" And I'm like, "You know, I do." How to install what? Towel hooks? No, towel I don't. hooks. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, I, I don't think so. Um, I, I, I don't know how to do that. I don't want to know how to do that. And, uh, you know, that's what next door is for. So, yeah. <laughs> well, no, next door. Well, no. next door is to discover how many really nasty people live close to you and uh, whether or not the, the, the neighborhood is being stalked by well, if I did, you make a posting there. Uh, look at this little cute little kitty I just got, you know, and bam, you know, Bella, what did it ever occur to you that kitty didn't want to live in your house? Maybe the kitty doesn't want to live in the valley. You, you know, it's yeah. So, um, David, uh, I'm pretty sure if, if people go to that URL that's on the screen, isn't, is there a link at the bottom of that page that takes people to last year's curriculum? Is that, am I remembering right? So the, uh, the page that has a video like this has that link on it. But I learned from a good friend of mine named Dan O'Day to never give people more than one job to do That's on great. a registration page. Okay. So, yeah. Because I would, I would, someone who's never 
not familiar with the class, I can understand where they, you know. Yeah. But if they, if they, you know, we are here to answer questions. So if you want a link to the actual uh, curriculum, just let us know, send us an email or send us, you know, post something. We'll put it in the chat or whatever. Uh, Jennifer Benitez Taft says, dad, D-A-D, -D, David and Dan, <laughs> you're awesome. Looking forward to taking the class. We're looking forward to having you, yeah, Jennifer. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Very kind. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to call this, Dan. I think we're good. Okay. Anything you want to cover before we go? No, um, if you guys got questions, you can email David, you can email me, you can ask them right here, which is great because that way other people uh, can share in the answer. We'd really like to help if we can. And I will, and this does break that rule of mine, but David, in, I'm always, I am always thinking, okay, there are people here who have never heard of us. They've never heard of the class. All they've heard is how, is how hard audiobooks are. And so if you've never heard of us before and you, you're not going into this thing, and yeah, I've heard great things, uh, but instead you're thinking, are, are these, what's the deal? Or can I trust them? If you go to the main domain, acxmasterclass.com slash kudos, K-U-D as in David, O-S as in Sam, you'll see, I think it's roughly two hundred reviews of this class and for every review there's their picture there's their name and there's the city they live in so you can stalk them if you want but see what other people are saying if, if you don't already know and david I, I i i know it took us longer than you wanted no that's okay i just i think that's great and 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 it's actually kind of cool because most people can't say that they can't say we have 200 past students who have really great things to say about us. David, one of these days, because I think about this, one of these days I'm going to say to you, uh, you know what, this year, let's not make videos and stuff. Let's just send them the link to the kudos page and they can make up their own minds because every fear you have, somebody is addressing there. Yeah. And I think, you know, that'll save, save us a lot of work. Well, you. Yeah. yeah. Because yeah. you do the heavy lifting here. <laughs> All right. That's going to do it. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate it. Please share this link, the recording link with your friends. Anybody that you know wants to get more information about audiobooks and ACX and the masterclass, we'd love to share with them. We're looking forward to it. Again, this, this offer ends this Friday night. Don't wait. If this is something you've wanted to do, trust me, you're going to have a great time and we're going to help you get this stuff done. Uh, right. It's acxmasterclass.com slash 3 p.m.t. Uh, and we will talk to you guys soon. Thank you, Dan. Thanks, David. And uh, All right, see you later. hope to see you guys soon. Bye-bye.